All right, nerds, I got some comics to show you. Every Saturday, I'll show you some comics. This time is going to be a little different. It's usually just a mix of Marvel Brian Jade stuff. This time, it's nothing but Dazzler. All right, if we're talking Dazzler, let's start out with issue number one, right? So this is number one from the very early 80s. I think it was maybe just into 81. Um, Dazzler's an interesting character. This is not her first appearance. She appeared first in Uncanny X-Men. Uh, this is Dazzler number two. Obviously, Disco Land is important because you see she was modeled uh, after Disco. Roller skates, just the whole look. One of her very first um, in her rogues gallon was the Enchantress. Obviously, you know, you have an enchanting um, look of Dazzler, uh, there was some jealousy involved there. But Dazzler would often find herself sent over her head, particularly in these early days when she was learning about her powers, which is to take sound and convert it into light, and she would go up against folks like Doom that would be uh, just inspired by her heart. Um, this is Dazzler 4, Dazzler 5, Dazzler 6, she went against the Hulk, and here, you got to admit, the lady's got guts. Number eight. Number nine. Still in just a, her early costume. This is when Galactus uh, needed her power for a very particular reason. So she was kidnapped from by Galactus and went up against um, one of his heralds. This is number 12, and this is number 13, and this was, I think, one of the best issues of the entire run. This is where, this was uh, Orange is the New Black, you know, decades prior when Dazzler went to, went to jail for a night, and the grapplers were in jail, and they were going to teach her a lesson, but instead she taught them a lesson. And this was a, a little bit of a change uh, in the character, because the character... Early was a lot of um, trying to make it as a singer, kind of a single and alone. Um, a little bit of the female uh, Peter Parker, where just her luck was never on her side, and she always struggled to make ends meet, and but had the you know the heart of a hero. Um, but it was also an important comic. Dazzler was because uh, this was only in comic shops. And comic shops at that time were barely getting going. But if you see, there's no there's no uh, barcode for the newsstand, right? And so during this time, uh, a couple years prior, of course, Dazzler was... Um, oh, here's the Enchantress uh, coming back. Guest star Spider-Woman at that time. Uh, a couple years prior, Stan Lee was working on getting a Marvel movie made. Now, nowadays, we're like, wow, there's a lot of Marvel movies. Back then, not so much. Um, so it was, it was a really uh, big deal. And Dazzler was going to be the movie that was made. And Stan Lee was working on that. Um, they had an actress in mind to play Dazzler, um, which was Bo Derek. Bo Derek was the, uh, the gorgeous lady of Hollywood. She literally had the movie 10 uh, she starred in because Bo Derek was a perfect 10. And so Dazzler was going to be played by Bo Derek. Bo Derek's husband was her boyfriend or something at that time was going to be the director. But it's Hollywood. He was a little bit of a, a rascal and things fell through. But Dazzler's look and, and feel was 100% Bo Derek. And it was going to be Hollywood. It was disco. It was pop culture. It was all that stuff in um rolled in and so for dazzler to come out and the early issues to be comic shop only was a big deal to help those shops uh kind of draw some interest and there were some other comics that were comics only it wasn't just dazzler but dazzler was an important part of that then as you can see um that opened up a little bit uh things because comic shops weren't quite quite there oh here's rogue appearance but there's anyway, the point is there's a lot of fun history around the character Dazzler. 
and the comic was was a pretty good fun. It was uh, there was a lot of team up. She bumped into a little bit of everyone, which was great, which was common during this time. The Jim Shooter era, Jim Shooter love for characters to pop up in other titles, and I think as kids we love seeing it. Right now, if you see this, you can see a little bit of the kind of the the glamour look that that kind of encompassed this this comic. It's like that's almost like a Vogue magazine cover right um and this one if you can see this i mean is that dazzler is that fair faucet right um so it kind of had this um kind of steeped in a little bit of a hollywood vibe because she wanted to be a dazzler was a singer right um a little bit of the music biz coming in right in and so you can tell even they were kind of playing with the title you had you know, the early look at Dazzler. Then it was just kind of straight super heroic stuff, you know, kind of classic super heroic titles. But then you can see even how they tried to change the covers to kind of match this Hollywood vibe. Um, and I think this was Sienkiewicz. Sienkiewicz obviously was, um, got famous for his Moon Knight covers um, and then went on to do uh, New Mutants. Um, but I think these were some Sienkiewicz covers, actually. Sienkiewicz was awesome. Okay, speaking of Fair Fawcett, I mean, this is straight, I mean, an homage to Fair Fawcett, Burt Reynolds. I mean, they didn't do Sally Fields because Dazzler was a blonde, but, you know, I mean, this is the, what, the Cannonball Run or something. You, you know, I mean, just during that era, you could see how they were trying to tap into that Hollywood um, vibe with some of these covers. Um, another Sienkiewicz cover. I always loved it when Sienkiewicz would come to a title and do some covers. Um, it was great. 34, <clears throat> 35. This was going straight into Dazzler's disco, um, disco vibes. And then it looks like right here might have been when Sienkiewicz left as the cover artist um because that's kind of back to the comic book straight comic book vibe uh 37 38 you know some guest stars with the x-men and obviously she would go on to join the x-men during what i think is the best uh little segment of the claremont run of x-men which is australian years and you had just a funky lineup but uh it was great this was when dazzler and Longshot were on the team and their budding romance when Dazzler joined the X-Men years later. So 39, 40, 41, and 42, the last issue of Dazzler. All right, nerds, there you have it, Dazzler. Um, great comic, uh, a lot of fun. It's rarely that I just do one, one title, but I don't know, it just fit to look at to look at Dazzler this Saturday. So nerdsonnerd.com, there's content on Dazzler. There's content on all sorts of fun stuff. Um, comics, but also D&D, &D, board games, and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, nerds.